In the last video, we talked about what color blindness was, how the eyes are affected by color blindness, and we showed you some examples of what it's like to see through the eyes of somebody who is color blind. If you haven't already watched it, I'm going to leave a link up in the corner so that you can see it. And in today's video, I'm going to be talking about some of the ways that being color blind affects me in my day to day life and how it affects me when it comes to my quilting. So stick around to find out more. And don't forget, I'm going to have a colorblind accessible quilt color scheme download that you'll be able to use in your projects when you're making quilts for colorblind people. So make sure you're subscribed to get notified when that's released. Hi, I'm Tom and I am the colorblind quilter and I am on a journey to become a better quilter and I'm sharing my experiences with you along the way. If you like what you see, take a moment to hit that subscribe button and click the bell so you'll get notified when I release new videos. In the last video, and I shared with you that I have protonomaly color blindness, which is a mild red weakness. It is the most common form of color blindness and whilst it suggests that it's only red and green that can be an issue, you can actually have problems with all colors. Depending on what I'm doing on a daily basis, there's a good chance that I'll come across a situation which is affected by my color blindness, whether it's in my work, it's in what the clothes I'm wearing, it's in the food that I'm buying, or it's in the quilt that I'm making. I've often found myself in the past getting quite frustrated with it and feeling limited by not being able to see colors or getting colors confused or not being able to do what I want to do with colors. Recently, I've been learning to try and cope better and to not place limitations on myself. I'm trying to understand and realize that this is a skill that can be learned just like anything else. And with understanding the theory, a bit of practice and working hard, I can be just as good at picking color palettes for quotes as anybody else with normal color vision. So let's talk about how this affects me on a daily basis. Picking clothes. Does this shirt go with these trousers? Simple things that a lot of people will take for granted can be quite difficult for a colorblind person. When it comes to interior design, I'm often not allowed <laughs> to pick colors. Although I have been getting better, uh, but yeah, when we first bought our house, I suggest colors, it was like, no, not that one. The most common occurrence going to the supermarket to buy a banana. I can't tell you the number of times I've come home with green bananas, like green bananas. Somebody will say, oh, can you pass me that red pen? Can you pass me that green whatever? And it'll pick, get them confused. Another way that I sometimes have problems is cooking steak, as odd as this might sound. When it comes to seeing how well cooked the steak is, sometimes I can't tell if the steak is pink or if the steak is gray. When it comes to gardening, particularly with grass. I often will look at the grass and think that's a beautiful shade of green for my partner to say, no, that's brown and needs to be watered. I mean, if it's dead, that's kind of obvious, but when it's just a little bit dry, it's hard to tell the difference. When I'm using apps, games, things like that, if the designer has not taken it into account, for colorblind people, often a lot of games are unplayable, especially if it relies on colors. So matching colored balls, pick the two colors to match the tiles, all those kinds of things are really difficult unless there's some kind of symbol or some kind of really obvious differentiation between the two colors. So lots of games that I would like to play, I just can't play and often will die within like the first 15 seconds. Something that I have noticed recently is that if something is really colorful and really busy, with a lot of colors, it can actually make my eyes sore and tired. Looking at quilts that have lots of colors that are really difficult to differentiate between can be really tiring on the eyes. Or even like playing games or looking at websites that have way too much colors can be really tiring on the eyes as well. Thankfully nowadays, a lot of websites are clued up to color blindness and are very good with accessibility for everybody. So they'll often be using color safe palettes that have been tried and tested for colorblind people. Also picking gifts can be interesting. I have quite often picked up pink wrapping paper thinking it's grey or picked up kind of garish greetings cards that are not very nice. It just it's strange because it just it's in it's almost in everything that you do you know look out the window, look at the grass, look at the flowers, colors of cars, look at the person's clothes, look at the food in the shop, look at the app, look at this website, you know, look at this game, this TV program. Colors everywhere in the world and so it's it can be challenging in every aspect of life on a daily basis. Something that I do think though sometimes is that my memory does help. If I'm not sure of a color and I ask what color is this and it's pointed out to me, sometimes I find that then memory takes over and I'm able to remember that color is that color, but only once it's been pointed out to me. When it comes to quilting, this can either be a huge hindrance or it can be no bother at all. It really depends on the pattern, the fabric, the conditions that I'm working in, and how tired I am. 
as well. So I find that patterns that require lots of colors, you know, six, nine, 12, 15 lights, mediums, darks, I can have a lot of problems coloring them in particularly when it's a pattern that will say three shades of red, three shades of green, three shades of pink, three shades of orange, and that's probably disgusting together, but you get the idea, lots of colors that are close together. I find it very difficult to work my way through that coloring process versus something that's just two or three colors that can be a lot simpler. I find that I avoid patterned fabrics because the more colors that are in the pattern, the, the harder it is for me to see the colors and work with them. So I tend to stick to very light print, so maybe a solid with geometric shapes on top, dots or lines, or just I find that probably 95% of the things that I make are based on solids because I find them easier to work with. There's no variation across it, or at least I hope not. When I buy it, it's much easier for me to try and register the colour. When you get to the kind of grunge fabrics, ombre fabrics, or fabrics that are rainbow, that's just a nightmare. Avoid those like the plague. The only exception to the rule about pattern fabrics is Christmas fabrics. For some reason, and I don't know if it's just because Christmas is programmed into my brain, red, green, but I find most Christmas fabrics okay to work with and I'm able to fairly easily differentiate between the colours but it's probably because of Christmas colours they're very obvious greens they're very obvious reds so that's usually about the only time I will use pattern fabrics in my quilt. Here's an example here of a quilt and it's a Christmas quilt and I'm sure it's a beautiful design but that fabric is so busy that I cannot see the difference between the colors. It just looks like one big blob of red fabric to me. So sorry, it's a beautiful quilt, I'm sure, but I just cannot tell what these colors are. When I am quilting, if it's dark or it's not bright enough, then I will get colors mixed up. I have been working on quilts where I've been putting colors in order and have had problems. This quilt behind me is Simplicity by Alderwood Studio. There are 12 colors in here and you can see that there are groups of colors. When it came to doing the blue group, these two colors here are in the wrong place. This blue should be here and this darkest blue should be on the outside. But because the room wasn't brightly lit when I was putting that together, I sewed them the wrong way around. Now, a lot of people have looked at that and were like, no, I think that's great. It's really nice. It's different. It's not what you expect. So it adds something unusual to it. But for me, it was just a frustration because if it had the light on, I would have been able to see that easily because when it's nice and bright, I can very easily see there are two different shades there. When it comes to taking pictures of quotes for Instagram, I actually used to sit at night and edit pictures of what I had maybe sewn that evening until I realized that night shift on my phone was actually making it harder for me. And I was often putting things to people and they were saying, those colors are not quite right. Are you sure that's what you want to put out? And it was because night shift was taking all the blue out of it. And so it was making it harder for me to see certain colors. And it was making it harder for me to see when I was over editing a color or over editing a picture too much in one direction towards a certain color. So I now no longer edit pictures at night. I edit them during the day in bright light with my phone on normal mode. I find that when I work with bright colors, I'm okay, but when colors start to mix and you get more of a color in a color, that's when things start to get a little bit murky. You know, so purple is made from red and blue. Depending on the shade of purple, I might not be able to see that it's purple and I will often get blue and purple confused because of the red. And that extends into the colors. Normally I don't have a problem with the actual colors themselves. It's the values and the shades of the colors. And particularly when we get to the middle of the shade table where colors are very similar, it's very difficult to differentiate. Either side where we're on the white, lightest side or the black, darkest side can be okay. Right in the middle is that gray ground where it's very difficult to pick and differentiate between those colors. And then tints and tones, you know, throw those into the mix. Light grays become light pinks, light pinks become light grays, light blues become light pinks, light blues can become light grays. It just depends on the shade and it depends what's in it and where it is in the wheel. And it just, everything can get confusing at some stage. When it comes to quilt software, and this kind of goes back to the technology side of things, some quilt software out there is excellent and it labels colors. And so I can sit down and can color a quilt and I can see right like, corner citrus, I can get my corner shade card out and I can scan through it and be like, yep, yellow, got it. Other software is not so good at that and it doesn't label it and it very much relies on you being able to see the colors. And I actually have EQA that I spent the $300 or whatever it was it costs and very quickly realized that the software was pretty much unusable for me, the designing stage when it came to color 
colors, I would have to find the colors that I wanted on separate places and then upload them because I just couldn't use the color library because it just did not work for me. Which is disappointing when you spend that much money on a piece of software. Everything else with the software is great, but that aspect of it is pretty weak and it's something that I really think that they should be thinking about working on because there are a lot of colorblind people out there that are quilting and using that software. So EQ8, if you're listening, please, more colorblind accessible software. Software that is really good at that is prequel. They let me see the colors, not only as they go from value, but they also let me see the colors A to Z. So I can sit there and say, right, Clementine, third row in the C's, or I want Windsor, so it's the bottom row with the W's, and I find that so much easier. And not only that, but on the little bit of the side where it lists the colors, they actually put the name of the color as well, so I can still see it. That seems like a simple thing, but that is huge for me as a quoter as to how I can sit. I look at that pattern and go, right, that's that, that's that, that's that, without saying going, is that, what? And it's just, it's such a basic thing, but it makes a world of difference. Same goes for patterns. I've done tons of pattern testing this year. I've made 13 quilts since January for pattern testing alone. And I have experienced great patterns that are very colorblind, accessible, they have the names of colors, they have the color swatches listed with letters, and it's so easy to follow it through the pattern. And then I've had other patterns where they've used red and green, and I've sat there and be like, I can't see the difference. I can't tell the difference with where this goes. I can't see on the, the PDF what goes where, and so I've had to get help. Because when you're testing a pattern, sometimes the instructions aren't as clear as they are on the finished version. And so when you're looking at it, you're like, I don't understand where that bit goes. I'll just look at the picture. And then you look at the picture and you're like, I still don't know where it goes because I can't find that bit. And it definitely helps when it's emerald green and Christmas red. Like I can see those clearly, see the difference between them. Mentally, this can be tiring and frustrating because when you see something so beautiful and you want to reproduce it, but in your own colors, and you can't quite do it because you can't quite work with the shades because the pattern relies on three shades of green and three shades of red and three shades of purple and you just can't quite get it, you get very frustrated very quickly. And sometimes you find you just walk away and just don't do a pattern. And you spent time and money trying to figure it out and it just it just kind of gets you down a little bit. It can be really deflating to just look at something like, how can you create something so beautiful? And yeah, I spent hours and I can't, I just can't do it. I guess you would say you can feel restricted by it. One thing I'm finding is that I really would like to design my own patterns and some one of the reasons why I did pattern testing was to get into figuring out how to design quilts and quilt patterns and something that's holding me back is colour because I'm, I suppose I have a fear of designing something and putting it out for people to laugh and be like, oh, that's terrible, what's he thinking? And a great tip was given to me by Karen from Just Get It Done Quilts and she said, you know, design it in black and white first to get your geometry right and then put your colours in. And I was like, oh, that's a great idea. Like that, made, it just made so much sense in that instance. And I was like, wow, you can really actually work with that. And you know, I've tried it, a couple of quotes in black and white. And I find that I'm not as nervous, not as worried, I'm not trying to get it perfect from the get go. And it's actually made the process a little bit simpler. So I'm hoping that's going to be the prelude to helping me to get over my fear of making my own pattern. So that's it for the second part of this video. I hope that it's been somewhat interesting to kind of get an insight into how being colorblind affects me daily and how it affects me when it comes to my quilting. And in the next video, I'm going to be telling you how I cope and how I get around these these limitations with strategies and resources that help me. Now, if you have a question about colorblindness or colorblind quilting, go ahead and leave me a comment down below because I'm going to do a Q&A video at the end of the series and I'm going to answer as many questions as I can in it. And don't forget that free download of the colorblind accessible quilt color palette is going to be available on the fourth part of this video series for you to download and use in your own projects. So make sure you're subscribed so you get notified when that's there. If if you've liked this video please do give it a thumbs up and please do subscribe and click the bell to get notified by youtube when i release new videos you can find me on instagram pinterest and facebook at the colorblind quilter or you can go to my website thecolorblindquilter.com take care and i'll see you next time